Hey folks, my name is Joe Barnard. I'm here in my shop and this is a bit of a different video today. I've always wanted to do a shop tour, but it's never felt interesting enough to put on this channel. Then, one day a little while ago, a company called Astronus got in contact with me. Astronus is sponsoring this video and they're a company up in San Francisco that builds geostationary satellites. They're like a legit aerospace operation. They just launched their first geo satellite on board a SpaceX Falcon Heavy in April and it's been happily working on orbit since then. Astronus' goal is to build geosatellites smaller, faster, and cheaper, and they're starting out with this one as the first of many communication satellites in their fleet. They were interested in working together on a video, and I pitched this kind of ridiculous idea to them. You know that video that's like $10 cheeseburger versus $1,000 cheeseburger? What if we did that, but like aerospace companies. To start off, we're here in my garage, just got this brand new CNC here. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. This is where a lot of the metalworking happens. The tools that I use the most are the drill press, the chop saw, and then the band saws, both horizontal and vertical. These machines are a staple of most shops and you can get a ton done on them alone if you're just working with those. Now, rockets are tubes, they're cylinders, which means that a lathe is an important part of any rocketry machine shop. This is a cheap import lathe that I got off of eBay a few months ago, and it's one of the best purchases I've made, even though the quality on this machine is pretty poor. I follow Adam Savage's rules for buying tools, which is essentially that when you're buying tools, you should start out buying the cheapest version of the tool you can get. Then when that cheap tool kicks the bucket, that's the time that you should upgrade to the nicer one. When you're getting started, you don't know how much you're gonna use a tool. And when I bought this lathe, I didn't know that it was gonna spend every week doing hours of machining time. I didn't know that I would need it that much. So once this thing kicks the bucket, I am gonna get a real nice lathe and we're gonna replace this. On the opposite end of the spectrum is my horizontal bandsaw. I got this thing for super cheap and I'm glad that I didn't spend a bunch of money on it because I hardly ever use it. And actually, if you look close, this is Xyla Foxland's old bandsaw. She gave me this thing when she moved to a bigger shop a little while ago, and this is a great way to get tools. You can get them used on Craigslist or eBay for a lot less than you would spend new, and I recommend doing that if you're trying to save a few bucks. Thanks, Isla. And finally, we come to the heart of my little machine shop, which is the Tormach PCNC 440 mil. This thing builds all sorts of parts, and it's the perfect size for the rockets that I'm making. Having a CNC helps speed up rocket building in a way that is a little weird sometimes. Often, I'll make parts on this mill that should be done with a lathe, basically cylindrical shaped parts. But if the part doesn't need to be perfectly centered with the circles I'm cutting, the CNC lets me make those parts without babysitting a lathe for a few hours. There isn't a whole lot else to cover in my little machine shop here. These are the big tools, the heavy hitters. So let's head over to Astronus and see what they use to fabricate things. The machine shop for Astronus is considerably larger, which makes sense given that the whole facility is about 153,000 square feet. On the more basic side, the facility has a solid lathe, a classic bridge port knee mill, and a huge horizontal bandsaw. These things are all great and they're important tools to have, but the real magic there is in the CNC mills. When I visited the facility, they had three CNCs running, each with a slightly different goal. And I'll let one of the machinists, Jeff, tell you a little bit more about them. So we added a haas for doing mostly three axis mill work. So it's like, kind of like what your Tormach and stuff. Yeah. This is one of our like major major purchases and these are uh, like large scale uh, five axis Matsura. And so it's pretty much one of the highest precision machines you can get. For every gram that we save on the actual space vehicle, we can stay in orbit longer. So this right. is when it becomes a very important thing to like save little bits of anywhere possible. Something Jeff mentioned when we chatted was the purpose of this third machine over here. The little carousel of mounts means the machine can actually mill and swap out many parts in a single operation without the need for a machinist to interact with it. A machine like this can process parts 24 hours a day more efficiently. Now here in my garage, I'll check the dimensions of the parts I make with a little pair of calipers. I've got plastic calipers for quick and dirty measurements, metal calipers for more precision measurements, and I've even got a set of huge Mac Daddy honking calipers for when things get big. Astronus certainly has pairs of calipers to check their dimensions and, you know, maybe none quite as big as this, but they also have something else to check the accuracy of their parts to a much higher degree. Here, come on, come on in. This is our final step on our inspection process. So one of the coolest parts about this thing is how precise this thing is. Got the capabilities of measuring into the like basically like micron, submicron level. This machine has a tiny probe on the end and it exists in a climate controlled room on a solid slab of granite to check the dimensions of parts with unbelievable precision, far more than a standard pair of calipers could. 
This is the most humbling machine uh, in the shop. When you, oh, it's going to show you like everything that went wrong on the. When plane, you think right? you're a good machinist, this thing like is like a wake up call real quick. <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much for your yeah, time. Totally. Oh man, you're losing <laughs> me. Okay, all right, we got to cut, cut, get that out of there. <laughs> now that we have the machine shop covered, let's head to the back room and check out the electronics shop to see what's going on there. This is where I build all the electronics for the rockets I fly. There aren't a bunch of big fancy tools in here, but there is one big tool, and that's desk space. Desk space kind of works like a gas. Basically, whatever junk you have will fill the desk space you have, no matter how much. If you can't tell, my desks usually aren't in this nice of a state. This desk over here is my favorite. It has a pegboard for hanging tools, which I find really helpful. It also has a light, which makes those top-down shots that I like so much very easy to shoot. I've got a little point-and-shoot camera that's always mounted up there so I can get top-down shots whenever I need. As far as the specific tools that I used most, those are going to start with the needle nose snippers, needle nose pliers, vice grips, and wire strippers. All of these are like mostly essential for electronics. You can certainly get away with less. I mean, you can strip wires with your teeth pretty well, but your dentist will call you on it eventually. For larger instruments, I've got a power supply up to 30 volts and 5 amps, a good voltmeter, an oscilloscope and digital scope for when my flight computers are acting up, and the oscilloscope brings us over to this workbench. Here we have the soldering station on the right, which doubles as a rework station and then triples as a power supply too. This works well with a heat resistant mat under it, and I like using these little bendy arms so that I don't burn my hands too much. This thing here is like the greatest. It's a magnifying glass with a ring light, and I use it all the time. It's not that you can see that much more with the magnifying glass, it just makes it so much easier. You don't really know that it's dark until you turn a light on, and you don't really know how great it can be to assemble electronics until you do it with one of those. And they're totally worth it because you can find them for super cheap on Amazon, which reminds me that all of these tools, with a few exceptions, are going to follow that Adam Savage rule as well. Buy the cheapest thing you can, and then when it breaks, upgrade to something better. With all that covered, let's head back to Astronus to see how they do their electronics. And um, you remember that thing I said about how desk space, you know, the junk will fill whatever desk space you have? Astronus has sort of set out to challenge that, I think. In the shop, there are rows and rows of tables filled with various bits and bobs of electronics equipment. Honestly, they may have found the limit where there's just not enough junk to fit this amount of table space. I suspect the real reason, though, is that Astronus is gearing up to build far more satellites. Back to the electronics benches, the setup isn't actually that much different. It's just, you know, much larger. <laughs> Across these benches, they've got soldering stations, rework stations, power supplies, and some very fancy cabling. We have a bunch of our extra wire for stuff. There's a lot of extra wire. Yeah. My goodness. I mean, I guess it makes sense. You I think like one spool of this is like $5,000 or something. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's really expensive. That's, yeah. No, yeah. That's, not the, uh, that's not the Amazon yeah. wire. It's not no. the Amazon wire. One major difference with the electronics setups here is that while Astronus will build their cables and rework boards in this facility, they do their testing and final board integration in a special ESD safe room where we visited next. Here, all of their PCBs get tested and hooked up to their enclosure, and this room is also incidentally filled with tables and lots of fancy equipment. Now, I didn't ask if I could take any of their equipment home, but you know, what if what if they just lost one of their oscilloscopes and like who knows where it went probably don't ask any questions about it Maybe this isn't good to put in a sponsored video <laughs> The other thing that happens in this room is all of the programming of their flight computers and controllers. Um, this is actually a what we call it a backplane. This is where we plug in a uh, flight computer to be uh, programmed Oh, with really? All of our, with all of our software. Yeah. See, I just use a USB cable and I just go right <laughs> into it. <laughs> After visiting the electronics lab, we went through a few more parts of the facility that I can't really compare to. I mean, like, I would love to have a FOD-controlled clean room for aerospace welding, or an entire room dedicated to thermal vacuum testing, but weirdly, my house didn't come with that? One thing I did love seeing was something they call a flat sat. So basically, before you send a command to a satellite in space, you want to make sure it works on the ground. So what Astronus does is they take all of the electronics and mechatronics guts out of the satellite, they lay it out on the table, and then they run the command on the flat sat before they send the command to space to make sure that everything's gonna play nice. Running this whole thing, though, was my buddy James, who I actually knew from working with him on a Hyperloop pod in the 2017 SpaceX competition. And for the final comparison between my little shop and Astronus's huge operation, I heard that they had a few 3D printers, and it turns out 
we have the same printer. I use a Prusa i3 Mark II and Mark III, and they've got a Prusa Mark III and a Prusa Mini. Most of what they use these for are to check general fits between parts, and especially for some of the complex parts, it actually helps the machinists understand how to make them out of raw stock material. All in all, though, I found a larger number of similarities between my little shop and Astronis than I thought I would, and I'm really grateful to Astronis for giving me the opportunity to go through their facility with a camera, which is a super uncommon thing to do in aerospace. Astronis is creating something really special up in San Francisco, and their first geosatellite has been a massive success so far. As a fun side note, much like my little garage operation here, Astronis started building out in a much smaller office space, building test units in makeshift PVC clean rooms. And it's inspiring to see how much larger their operation has become since then. You can learn lots more about them in the description down below, and be sure to check out their video where they go back in time and share some of those stories from their startup apartment days. Thank you again to Astronis for sponsoring today's video. Thanks to you for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.